there comes a day when our chatty child can become, well, uh, well, we'll call them a troubled teen because teenage years, we know they're pretty tough. And that's what we're discussing in Coffee Group this morning. We welcome back John Cowan from The Parenting Place and welcome for the first time parenting educator, Debbie Dewitty. Now, Deb, puberty. Oh, it still sends shivers down my spine just thinking about it, thinking about when I went through mm -hmm. it and thinking about my children going through it. It can mm -hmm. be a really confusing time, can't it? Sure is. And uh, kill the Mel. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> you too. Yeah, and it is. And I, I guess, you know, life is a series of transitions and this is one of them. You know, so transitioning from that childlike state into puberty is really about, there's a whole mechanism within the brain. So there's hormonal changes, physical changes, emotional changes, and it's all part and parcel of the maturing sexual reproductive area. Oh. <laughs> I'm just thinking about my children, it's like, it's, it's all too much. So how do we support them through it? What should we do? Well, I think of those three um, key things in terms of um, strategies. So love and warmth, yeah. can't go wrong there. Um, talking and listening, and I think for parents, like it's more about listening to our teens and also that guidance and understanding. You know, there's going to be limits and boundaries. These are the skip six yeah. principles of parenting that um, parents within Aotearoa, you know, yeah. put together. I love the love and warmth. Yeah. Um, the communication thing. John, how can I best communicate with my teen? Make sure that your body language isn't in any way transmitting mistrust or disappointment. That sort of thing? Or, yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, and there's so much in their world that we're not perhaps all that crazy about. We don't like their mates, we don't like their music, we don't like the, what they're wearing. And so sometimes our body language can convey mistrust, disappointment, yeah. and uh, our teens pick up on that and they just won't want to engage with us and so they oh. give us the silent treatment. Okay, so if they do start pulling away and becoming secretive, I mean, what do I do about that? Well, this, oh. I was going to say, don't have a sookie. <laughs> yeah. The worst thing is when they're sort of all, all you know, down in, in mouth and, and we get offended. Yeah. Do I have uh, to be the grown up here? Yeah, yes, you do. Yep. You do. Yeah. Okay. And I think it's because they're learning how to be grown up. And I, I reframe it. They're becoming more connected to their friends, their mm. peers. That, that's important for them, you know, what yeah. their mates think about what what's happening in the world and, yeah. and so we want to know everything and sort of micromanage the, the process, some of us, yes. but it's actually allowing them the space and the time and thinking about how we have the welcome to them, you know, that whole love and warmth that I talked yeah. about, you know, how do we welcome them? I into... love that love and warmth. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about drugs and alcohol because mm -hmm. this is a very big thing in most parents' life, thinking yep. about their children who start to experiment with these things. How do you make sure that they're making safe choices? Mm. Mm. I think I think one of the things for me is that we have to be what we call the prefrontal cortex. It's the break on their emotional state and so where they're coming from is their limbic part of the brain and so they're highly emotional, reactive, impulsive which generally washes out and so this is this is a thing that happens around teenage or adolescent behaviour. Is there anything we need to do particularly? Yeah well when I say the prefrontal it's about us um, being the break for them and getting them to think about things like building scenarios for them saying okay so you're going off to a party what do you think may happen so that they come up with some of the strategies themselves so it's like if you scaffold them in a way and remember the foundation years are really that's the opportunity that we do it then you're giving them the opportunity to think through Okay. Yeah. What if scenarios, getting mm. them to rehearse in their head, what will happen if someone does this? What if the person you're going yep. to get a lift home with has been drinking? Yep. And you get them to actually think of some solutions before yeah. they encounter yeah. them. Good point. Mm. Now just quickly at the end here, um, what, how do we keep those cuddles and those hugs and that love going with our teenagers if they don't, well, if they get a bit prickly? Yeah, they do yeah. get prickly because mm. they've got all this emotional stuff going in, mm -hmm. inside. So sometimes it's, oh, get away. Yeah. And it's just a stage. And yep. so if you haven't had a hug or a cuddle with your teenager 
for a while. Try one of those sort of yawn stretches and you know, <laughs> arms around the shoulder. And if you lose teeth, it's still too early. But they do go, they do go through these stages, and yeah. then they do want to be hugged again. I know my son used to always say to me, not in front of my mates, yes. Mum. OK. You know, so, like, yeah, we could do this, like, in the privacy of our home, but, you know... I'm not in front yeah. of the mates. No. Yeah. Sound advice. Hey, thank you so much both for coming yeah. in. Deb and John, great advice today.